My name is Jeremy. I'm the Technology Programming Librarian with the Elmhurst Public Library. Today's video you are about to watch is about activity or fitness applications and tracking technology used on wearable devices. You will learn about some of the most popular and free smartphone applications, what activity trackers can do as well as how they function, learn the differences between a tracker and a smartwatch, the popular brands and models available, as well as where to go to find even more information to make a more educated purchasing decision. Please take note as we move along today that free on the App Store, such as the Google Play Store or the App Store on an iPhone, free does not always mean free. Many free applications will at least have some form of advertisements. Many will also have in-app purchase prompts, for instance, some exercise videos may be free with the free version, but they will prompt you to pay to unlock more. You do not need to pay for anything you don't want to. Feel free to take advantage of any free trials offered and only pay it if you find the cost is worth it to you. Sometimes it is worth it if the application is working for you, but you can make that educated decision on your own. At the time that this video is made, all of the applications that I'm about to feature are offered for free in the App Store. They do contain some in-app purchases as well as some advertisements, but you can at least test it out and use these applications at no cost first. Map My Run by Under Armour offers a collection of workouts to be selected from, such as biking, running, walking, and those can all be tracked. It also includes training plans to reach your goals that you set for yourself and even run coaching to improve your running performance over time. RunKeeper is another application that can track and record a number of exercises using the GPS built into your smartphone. The application can calculate your pace, provides audio updates during a workout, such as your running splits, and even suggests pre-planned routes based on how far you would like to go. JetFit is a great option for logging your reps at the gym to easily track the weights and reps you've done. There is also an instruction database that has over 1,300 demos and variations to follow. You can track your goals that you've set and use their challenges to motivate yourself. Home workouts, no equipment. Sounds great, right? Some of us have busy lives and can't always find the time to get to the gym. This application provides workout instruction for things that you can do from the comfort of your home with just you and your own body weight. Animated video guidance will show you how to do the exercises. The application also tracks your training progress. Workout for Women has some targeted workouts to help women reach their fitness goals. Many of the exercises require no equipment and target specific areas of the body. The application also tracks calories burned and weight loss progress. Daily Workout Fitness Trainer has 10 different 5 to 10 minute exercises targeted towards specific areas of the body and even 10 to 30 minute randomized full body workouts. Video instruction for the exercises can also be found and even provide a timer so that you can easily keep pace and follow alongside the instruction. 8 Fit Workouts and Meal Planner includes workouts that just take between 5 and 20 minutes to complete. Nutrition is a large part of your goal and accounts for about 80% of the focus of this application. The app provides opportunities to plan out meals, create shopping lists, and even suggests foods to eat or avoid to keep you progressing through your goals. 7. Not only is it Mickey Mantle's number and George Costanza's idea of a great name, it's also an application that has daily seven minute workout challenges. You can also create workouts tailored to your goals. The exercises in the app don't require any equipment, so you can work out whenever you have the time and space that's convenient for you. Nike Training Club has many free workouts, including high intensity interval training, yoga, body weight workouts, and cardio training plans you can follow to reach your goals and even get personalized recommendations and see your workout history. When it comes to fitness or activity trackers, you do really have a lot of options these days. 
We'll go over some of the major players in the market and give you some information on what to consider and look for to make a better educated decision before you spend that hard earned money. Some of the most common features of wearable devices include heart monitoring, music storage, smartphone connectivity, sensors, and specific workout tracking modes. Fitness trackers work by using sensor technology and algorithms to calculate data and translate it into accurate information that you can easily read as things like steps taken, heart rate, distance traveled, REM sleep, and even more. On the next several slides, we'll discuss types of sensors and what they are used to track. An accelerometer counts your steps. The sensor works by detecting which orientation the device is in and whether or not it's moving. These devices use algorithms and produce a number of steps and will be fairly accurate, but will likely never be 100% precise as if you are counting your own steps in your head. An altimeter detects changes in height and altitude so that it can measure stairs or slopes to more accurately measure calorie count. Ambient light sensors detect light within the current space so that it can adjust brightness based on the times of day. For instance, if you are in direct sunlight or in a movie theater, it will adjust the brightness level of your watch based on the surrounding areas. A bioimpedance sensor measures the resistance that your skin is offering to a small amount of electricity. This is then used to measure things such as sleep, heart rate, respiration rate, water level, and even more. Compass is a little self-explanatory. It helps your map applications and gives the device a sense of direction. Now the electrodermal activity sensor, that's a mouthful, also known as galvanic skin response sensor, is a new sensor in addition to wearables. It measures stress along with a heart rate tracker, ECG, and skin temperature sensor. It can detect small electrical changes in the sweat level of your skin and helps you manage your stress. It really tries and attempts to detect your emotional responses, to discover when you're stressed out and maybe you need to take a moment and breathe and your wearable might prompt you to do so. GPS, Global Positioning Satellites, has been around for a while, but now the technology has advanced enough to produce at a much smaller scale, enough to fit on your wrist. GPS uses a network of 29 satellites, four of which should be within range to pinpoint your exact location at any given time. This allows you to map your exercise and analyze the terrain just by using your wearable or your smartphone. Using GPS does tend to wear the battery down more than other sensors. A gyroscope measures angular velocity. This helps the device determine whether you're actually jogging or jogging in place. A magnetometer works alongside compass and GPS to determine the exact coordinates of your location. Optical heart rate monitors. These sensors use LED light that shines through the skin. The optical sensor examines the light that bounces back. Since the blood absorbs more light, fluctuations in light level can be translated into heart rate. Using these sensors designed for the wrist are not as accurate as using fingertip or chest-worn models. Proximity sensors are generally used to save the battery by only waking the display when it knows you're near the device and would like to use it. For instance, when you're turning your wrist to check your wearable. The SpO2 monitor measures your deoxygenated blood. It detects that by detecting the slightly darker red color. These sensors measure the relative reflection of red and infrared light from your blood via your wrist to estimate your SpO2 value. And lastly, some wearables might even have UV sensors. These are used to detect when it is being exposed to harmful UV rays. This could alert you so that you may get out of the sun if you are likely to burn. Many of you might be wondering, should I get a fitness tracker or a smartwatch? We'll go over some of the differences and the many similarities between the two. Fitness trackers will track things like steps taken, distance traveled, and other workout activity 
measure calories burned, and tend to be designed more like a bracelet. Many of them record the data from the device and translate that into data by using a companion application directly to your smartphone or computer. So you can actually see all of the progress that the wearable measures. Smartwatches track much of that same data that fitness trackers capture. Some of them even work without a cell phone nearby. Many can usually run independent applications. For instance, the RunKeeper app can be installed onto the watch itself and used without your smartphone. Smartwatches are also designed such as that as a watch and tend to be larger than the activity trackers. Next, we'll go over some of the popular brands and devices available on the market today. Samsung is a popular brand in smartphones and wearable devices. Samsung's wearable devices could include the Galaxy Fit 2 and the Galaxy Fit. Please note when you go to make any purchases to make sure that these devices are compatible with your current smartphone. For instance, as you see here, the Galaxy Fit is compatible with Android 5.0 and up and iOS 10 and up. Fitbit, I'm guessing that you might already be familiar with. Technology has really come a long way and Fitbit has been one of the leaders in the wearable world. Some of their models include the Fitbit Charge 4 and the Inspire 2. Also from Fitbit includes the ACE 3, which is designed with kids in mind, and the Lux. Amazfit is another brand of wearable devices. Some of these also come with Amazon's Alexa AI Assistant built in. For more information, feel free to read online customer reviews from retail and electronic stores, such as Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and Amazon. Use these websites to view the specifications and be sure that the device includes what you want. Use Consumer Reports Online, available with your li library card from the Elmhurst Public Library. Or even ask family and friends who already use the wearable devices and might be able to offer you some insight. Next, I'll show you how to access Consumer Reports and search for things like fitness trackers and smartwatches. To access Consumer Reports through the Elmhurst Public Library, visit our website, elmhurstpubliclibrary.org. You'll see the green strip where you see About Us, follow it over to eLibrary. Here you can browse all databases by title, but you'll also notice a consumer information link. We're going to go ahead and click and go to this page. Here we list all of the databases that offer consumer information. You can also get there directly by typing in elmlib.org slash consumer. Once you're on this page, you'll see the link for consumer reports. Click that link and log in with your Elmhurst Public Library card number and either your PIN or your last name, and you'll have access to see all of Consumer Reports ratings for specific devices. If you choose, you can browse all products alphabetically, so here you can find fitness trackers and smartwatches. You can also do a search. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to find smartwatches. In here you'll see recommended smartwatches as well as ratings that Consumer Reports has made. And now I'm going to search for fitness trackers and other wearables. And here we see the fitness tracker specifically also have recommendations and ratings. So use this at your leisure to do some research before you make any purchases and make sure that you are spending that money wisely. Good luck and happy health. Thank you for watching.